Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the dynamic characteristics of SCR. The link for the material will be provided in the description and you can download it for your reference. So let's get started. So at the first place, dynamic characteristics is required for determining the speed of operation of SCR that is during turn on or turn off. And these are divided into two separate characteristics. What happens to the device during turn on and what happens to the device during turn off process. So you need to remember one basic concept. I've considered the symbol of thyristor or SCR. You can also refer to it as thyristor as well. So whenever the device is turned on, current will increase. And what happens to the voltage? The voltage will decrease. The reason is because when it is turned on, the device will be acting as short circuit. So when it is acting as a short circuit, obviously the current will increase and the voltage will start decreasing and it will be equal to the on state voltage drop. So I hope this point is clear. Similarly, what happens to the device when it is turned off? Turn off condition is indicated by open circuit, isn't it? So when the circuit was previously closed and it is open now, the current will start decreasing because it is open circuit, isn't it? No current will be flowing through this path and the voltage will start increasing because whatever supply you are applying will start be will be building up across this point. So if you're applying 5 volt, 5 volt will be directly appearing at this point. So that is why the voltage starts increasing. So if you understand these two points, then the analysis of the entire circuit or the characteristics will be very, very simple and straightforward. So let's start with the turn on characteristics. So turn on characteristics is basically the time taken for the SCR from forward blocking mode to forward conduction mode. So the transition from forward blocking mode to forward conduction mode is called as turn on characteristics. You need to remember one thing. It is not from reverse blocking mode. A lot of people have confusions with respect to this. It is not from reverse blocking mode, whereas it is from forward blocking mode. So now let us look at the characteristics as how it is. If you carefully observe the characteristics, this is the gate current that is applied. So after 90% of the gate current that is supplied, so basically you're applying gate voltage and the gate current starts increasing slowly. And after 90% of gate current is reached, what happens to the SCR is that the anode current or the current flowing through the SCR will start increasing. As I told you, according to the concept during turn on. So the current starts increasing and the voltage stops decreasing. So till this point, if you observe the voltage was very high. And from this point, that is 90% of IG, the current starts increasing and the voltage starts decreasing in this particular fashion. So finally, what will happen? It will decrease to such a value that it will be equal to the on state voltage drop. So there will still be some amount of voltage and that is basically the on state voltage drop of the device. And it is typically two volts like that kind of a value. Whereas the anode current will start increasing and it becomes saturated beyond certain value and becomes constant in this particular fashion. So there are some time intervals over here. Delay time that is TD and you have TR and then you have TS. So these are the time period that we are going to discuss during turn on. So while we are turning on the device, the total time taken over here is basically the turn on time T on. So it is the sum of TD, TR and TS. So we will be looking at each of these separately. So delay time is basically the time taken at the instant of 90% of IG to 10% of IA. So if you carefully observe in this particular waveform, 90% 0.9 means in percentage it is 90% of IG to 10% of IA. So this is the 10% of IA. So TD is basically this instant that is from 90% of IG to 10% of IA is defined as the delay time. Or in other words, you can also say that it is a time taken for the fall of voltage from 100% of VA to 90% of VA. So if you carefully observe this interval and compare it with respect to voltage, the voltage is falling from 100% to 90% at this point. So this is how you will be defining delay time. One more important point that you have to remember is during delay time, the current is very small and it is associated with a very small area. That is, if you see this particular interval, it is very less in comparison with the TR, isn't it? And that is why the area associated with this is also very, very small. 
by controlling the gate current only delay time is controlled but tr and ts is unaffected this is a very important point and the explanation for this point is as follows now if you increase the gate current for example what will be happening the delay time that is td will be reduced when td is reduced obviously the time period that is t on will be reduced isn't it because t on is basically the sum of td tr and ts so when td is reduced by increasing the gate current obviously t on will be reduced but remember tr and ts is unaffected so very very important point even if you increase the gate current only td will be affected and you have to make a note of this point now let us look at the concept of rise time so again i would expect you to define this on your own by looking at the waveform so rise time is basically the time taken for the fall of voltage from 90% to 10% so this is basically the interval isn't it tr so from 90% to 10% is basically the rise time or in other words it can also be understood as the time taken for the rise of current from 10% to 90% because it pretty much indicates the same thing so the current is increasing and that is why you will be defining all these parameters in two different ways that is with respect to current or with respect to voltage so you can consider any one of the definitions for this matter now one important point that you have to remember is if you carefully observe after this point the current is increasing rapidly isn't it so because of this what will happen di by dt the rate of change of current will increase sharply and because of this it will lead to local hot spots and the device might get damaged so what we do in order to avoid this is that we will be connecting an inductor in series with a scr so inductor in series with the scr will actually prevent the sudden change in di by dt isn't it so inductor does not allow sudden change in current according to lenz law so that is why an inductor is usually connected in series with an scr so remember this point very very important you might see some circuits having inductor in series with scr and the reason is because we need to prevent sudden change in di by dt so i hope this point is clear now the spread time is defined as the time taken between 90% of ia to 100% of ia from this point to this point if you see so ts is basically the time taken from this two points or you can again define it with respect to voltage as well so it is basically the time taken from 10% of va to on state voltage drop that is from this point to the on state voltage drop it reaches at this point isn't it so these are the two definitions with respect to spread time finally the conclusion is that turn on time is basically the sum of delay time rise time and spread time i hope this point is clear and turn on characteristics is clear so if you have understood turn on characteristics turn off characteristics is almost opposite to the turn on characteristics so we'll be looking at it now so turn off characteristics is basically the process of bringing scr from forward conduction mode to forward blocking mode basically the opposite one compared to turn on isn't it there we bought from forward blocking to forward conduction mode here we'll be moving it from forward conduction mode to forward blocking mode so how do we achieve this and all those things this can be achieved by applying some amount of reverse voltage and this process is called as commutation so to turn off the scr a reverse voltage will be applied and the current through the scr is reduced below the holding current so this was the condition that we saw in the static characteristics the current should be bought below the holding current value now let us look at the characteristics the dynamic characteristics is as follows now we are assuming that the device is in forward conduction mode and after some point you will be applying some amount of reverse voltage at this point what happens to the characteristics is that the current starts reversing its direction and consequently it will be flowing in this particular fashion so this is called as reverse recovery time and you again have tgr and tq which i will be explaining in detail and consequently what happens to the voltage the voltage will be constant or it will be in on state voltage drop condition so this is basically the on state voltage drop so once you reverse or you apply reverse amount of voltage what will happen the voltage will immediately reverse its direction and it will go after some point of time it will 
build up sufficient voltage and that voltage will be available across the SCR. So what was being told in the table, the current will decrease rapidly and the voltage will increase. So the voltage is increasing, isn't it? So basically we have TRR, which is basically the reverse recovery time and TGR is the gate recovery time and TQ is the turn off. So TRR is the time required for reverse biasing junction J1 and J3. Whereas TGR is the time for holding negative voltage across the thyristor to ensure that SCR is not turned on. So for example, uh, when we are applying reverse voltage, junction J1 and J3 which was forward biased will be reverse biased and that is why it is going in the reverse direction. Whereas TGR is responsible if you are using an external commutation circuit to turn this device off, you need to constantly apply negative voltage such a way that it will go below the holding current value or it is continuously providing negative voltage. Otherwise what will happen is that the SCR which was in forward blocking mode might go to forward conduction mode. So this will be the additional time that is required for ensuring that the device is still in turn off condition. So additional time required is basically the gate recovery time. So TQ basically the turn off time is the sum of TRR and TDR. I hope this point is clear and you have understood the dynamic characteristics of SCR. In case you have any questions with respect to this video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please do keep supporting. Thank you.